Thatch, would you like to come up here, young man? Everybody enjoyed their weekend here? Yeah. Thank you. Let's hear it for this committee and all the all the time and all the sponsors and everything it takes as a whole. The vendors, your participation and your support, and all the entertainers and their time and expense to come to this event and share their talents with us and get our minds off of things that aren't right in our lives. Let's hear it for them. Come on. We're going to uh, start a prayer this morning, and this young man is going to take that for us. Do you love his performance? Let's hear it for that. The Bear River Buckaroo. That's Yelmer from Bear River, Wyoming. Here you go, young man. Our Heavenly Father, we pause at this time, mindful of many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, please bless that we will be able to have a great day, and those of us that are traveling will be able to travel safely and that we'll be able to make it home safely and that we'll have a great rest of the day and that Cowboy Church will be good and the open mic will be good and in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Nice job. All right. We've got a good participation this morning of our performers up here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start one. I'm going to do one I did when I was 11 years old. My grandfather at the ranch there, he says, Tony, there's something I want you to hear. I haven't heard it for a very long many years. But he says, I know you, and he says, I know how your mind works. And he says, I know this will fascinate you. So we sat down, my mom's there too, and we had this old uh, uh, a January 17th, 1906 patented Victrola, my great-grandfather's. He opens up the doors and he pulls out this record. He sets it on the table after he pulls the door up, grabs a crank and he cranks this thing up, sets her down and it's playing. And I was so fascinated, I was so awestruck and so impressed with this story that I promised myself that I would learn it, which I did that same year, that was 1971. But I wanted to take it a step further. I wanted to learn its history. And that was long before the internet had been out. And of course, I wasn't old enough to drive, so I'd ride a bicycle. So I'd go to these libraries. I learned a little bit, but it wasn't enough. So I had my mother and father take me to other sources. And what I learned was this story goes back in excess of 200 years. In fact, its first known printing date was 1799, and again in 1806. Since then, it's been used during every wartime period throughout our American history, including today's war. With each war, the story being adjusted for the current time. It's been recorded by numerous artists, more notably, Tex Ritter in 48, which was a version I listened to that day. My mom still has a copy of that record. T. Texas Tyler in 54 and Whispering Bill Anderson in 91. Its geographic location is Monte Cassino, Italy. And its time frame is June 1944, WW2. And it's entitled The Deck of Cards. Now I've done some adjustment on this. There's some things that have changed, part of my tuned up and twisted cowboy poetry. During the North African campaign, a regiment of soldier boys had just come in off a long hike. They arrived at a little town called Monte Cassino. Next morning being Sunday, some of the boys went to church. A sergeant commanded the boys in church. After the chaplain finished his prayer, up next were the texts. Those of the boys that had prayer books opened a book. But one boy had a deck of cards, and he spread them out. The sergeant saw this and said, Soldier, put away those cards. 
After the service was over, the soldier was taken prisoner and brought before the provost marshal. Marshal says, sir, he says, why have you brought this man here before me? Marshal says, for playing card to church, sir, was his reply. Marshal says to the soldier, says, what do you have to say for yourself, son? The soldier stood at attention and says, mm -hmm. much, sir. I hope so, said the marshal, for if not, I'll punish you more than any man was ever punished. With that, the soldier began. He says, sir, I've been on the march now for about six months. I have neither Bible nor prayer book, but only a deck of cards. But I wish to satisfy you, sir, with the purity of my intention. And with that, the soldier introduced his testimony. He says, sir, when I see the ace, I know there's but one God. When I see the dew, I know the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old and the New Testament. When I see the tray, I think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And sir, when I see the four spot, I think of the four evangelists that preach the gospel. There was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I see the five, I think of the five wise virgins that trim their lamps. Well, there was ten of them, all right. Five were wise and were saved, and five were foolish and were shut out. When I see the six, I'm reminded, sir, that it took our Lord and Savior six days to create our beautiful heaven and earth. When I see the seven, again, sir, I'm reminded that on the seventh day, God rested after his great work. When I see the eight, I think of the eight righteous people that God saved when he destroyed the earth. There was Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their wives. And when I see the nine, I think of the lepers that our Savior cleansed. And of the ten, nine never even thanked him. When I see the ten, I think of the ten commandments that God handed down to Moses on a tablet of stone. When I look at a deck of cards, and I see the picture cards, I see the king. I know there's but one king, and that's God Almighty. When I see the queen, I think of our blessed Virgin Mary, the queen of heaven. And the jack, her name is the devil. And sir, when I pick up a deck of cards, and I look at the back, I come up with 365 spots, the number of days in a year. When I count the number of cards in a deck, I come up with 52, the number of weeks in a year. When I count the number of picture cards, I come up with 12, the number of months in a year. And there are four suits, number of weeks in a month. I know Christ, and his 12 disciples at the Last Supper for 13. The number of weeks and a quarter. So, you see, sir, my deck of cards serves me as a Bible, an almanac, and a prayer book. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I know this story is true because I knew that soldier. That soldier was Mr. Jimmy Lucas. I did that on the National Day of the Cowboy about eight years ago. And I was finishing for a Western swing band called the Stardust Cowboys at a Grange Hall. I finished with that verse, and this little old man, little fellow, he came up to me just bawling his eyes out. Of course, he caught me up in the action too. He comes up to me, and I thought I'd upset him in the worst way. And he says, this is his exact voice. 
with the quiver, the whole nine yards, the whole Marianne. He says, Sonny, you know what you've just done to me? I says, no, sir, I haven't. Obviously, it looks like I've upset you. I said, my apologies. No. I was there. I was there at that Battle of Monte Casino. Those soldiers saved my can. If it wasn't for those men saving my bacon, I would not be here today. You brought back memories, good ones. And I recall those men, my friends, that died right next to me. For that, there's something that I want you to have. Don't go away. I'll be back in 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, he came back. And he gave me a two-sided copy of his honorable discharge papers. He was in Patton's 7th Army. And he was there. Mr. Jimmy Lucas, and he lived in the same town. He was stationed at Beale Air Force Base before the war came out. And I, if somebody would like to see that, I have a copy of it in my briefcase in the car. Thank you. Would you like me to follow another one, or would somebody else like to come up here? This is for everybody this morning. Okay, this is a railroad town, one of three in the state of Idaho. Thank you, Abraham Lincoln. Let's hear it for Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> Idaho, like Nevada, is one of 19 states with counties named after that man. Lincoln is my hero. This one I'm going to give you has a lot to do with this town and why we are here today and why we had this event this weekend. There's three significant ties. That's why I'm going to give you this today. I haven't done this poem for probably about three or four years, but I know I can do it. I've got faith. A lot of people think that that famous fella, Anonymous, wrote this. That's wrong. The fellow that, in fact, wrote this in 1909 called himself the self-proclaimed cowboy preacher, J.W. Pruitt. And this is called The Hellbound Train. An old cowboy lay down on a barroom floor, having drunk so much he couldn't drink no more. So he fell asleep with a troubled brain to dream that he rode the hellbound train. The engine with murderous blood was damp and was brilliantly lit with a brimstone lamp. And it for fuel was shovel and bones while the furnace rang with a thousand groans. The boiler was filled with lagging beer and the devil himself, whoo -hoo, was the engineer. The passengers were a most motley crew, church members, atheists, Gentiles, and Jew. Rich men in broadcloth, bakers in rags, Lovely young ladies and withered old hags. Yellow and black men, red, brown, and white, all chained together. Oh, God, what a sight. While the train rushed on at an awful pace, the sulfurous fume scorched their hands and face. Wider and wider the country grew as faster and faster the engine blew. Louder and louder the thunder crashed as brighter and brighter the lightning flashed. Hotter and hotter the air became, till their clothes were burnt from each quivering flame. Then, out of the distance, there arose a yell. Ha ha! said the devil, we're near in hell. Then all how the passengers, they shrieked with pain, and they begged the devil to stop the train. But he capered about, and he danced with glee, and he laughed and he joked at their misery. My faithful friends, you've done the work, and the devil never can a payday shirk. Why, you bullied the weak, and you've robbed the poor. Your starving brother, you've turned from the door. You laid up gold where the <coughs> freely vent. You've given a bless with your ghastly vent. You're just a scorn and corruption sown, and you trample the laws of nature down. 
You've drank, rioted, cheated, plundered, and lied. And you've mocked at God and your hellborn pride. You paid full fare, so I'll carry you through. For it's only right you should have your due. Why, the labor always expects you hire. So I'll land you safe on the lake of fire. Where your flesh will race in the flames that roar. And my imps will torment you forevermore. <laughs> Then the cowboy awoke with an anguished cry. His clothes woke with sweat and his hair standing high. And he prayed as he never prayed till that hour to be saved from his sins and the demon's power. And his prayers and pleadings were not in vain. For he never rode the hellbound train. Mr. J.W. Pruitt. Bob and Mary, would you like to come up here? There we go. Now I can hear myself think. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Bob and Mary Lou Decker. Well, uh, Bob and I have, uh, we live in Hanson, and uh, we've been going around to the different senior centers there and nursing homes, and uh, and that came about because I had a little knee surgery and, and uh, gosh, there wasn't anybody there to, to uh, come and uh, hold your hand or play music or do anything. And it was, it was lonesome and a hard time to do that. So I felt like if I ever had a chance, I was going to do this. So, uh, so we, we kind of started that uh, going around and and uh, that's how this all got started. And uh, I play an auto harp, and an auto harp is uh, from the 1800s uh, when it was real popular in the in the parlors and uh, before TV and internet. <laughs> and and the, the people would get together and they they'd uh, sing and play the piano and play the auto harp. So we're gonna do uh, a song. Here called Supper Time.
memories of my childhood were woven around supper time, when my mother used to call from the back steps of the old home place, Come on home now, son, it's supper time. Oh, gee, but I'd love to hear that once more. But you know, for me, time has woven the realization of a truth that's even more thrilling. And that's when the call comes from the portals of glory to come home for its supper time. When all of God's children shall gather around the table with the Lord himself at the greatest supper time.
Let's hear a nice round of warm applause for Bob and Mary Lou Decker. That's beautiful. Thank you. They are proud members of the Cowboy Poets of Idaho. And enjoying it. Our next stage performer we're going to have up here happens to have a birthday tomorrow. He's 10 today. Tomorrow's his 11th birthday. And I'm not putting you on the spot, young man. I'm doing this as a group, and I want everybody here to wish you a happy birthday right now once you're up here on the stage. Come on up. special that he would like to share with us and this is your time young man thank you this is a, a poem that is very special to me it's called right for the bread an old cowboy and a preacher met on the prairie one day one right buckskin the other bay they squatter in the shade of a long cedar tree scratching the dirt contemplate you see Comparing their lives and the old cowboy spoke of the brands he'd ridden for and the horses he'd broke. The herds he'd gathered and held at all cost. And the hours spent riding when a few were lost. You see, you give up your life when you rode for the brand. And of this we've buried many a good hand. But as you can see, I'm well past my prime. And the boss says I'll soon have to draw my time. What can I do? I'm too tough to cry. I'm too old to work, but I'm too young to die. The preacher stood the dirt with his stick for a while, then he looked the cowboy in the eye with a smile, and said, I too ride for the bread, the scars and the nail holes and the palms of his hands. I've gathered a herd I'm holding for my boss, and I'm always out looking for those who are lost. Many have given their lives for this bread, and we all may be called on to take a stand. But you're never too old to ride with my crew. When you sign on here, your mate did his new. Well, the cowboy that day hired on for a new boss, and his foreman's the one who had died on the cross. He can ride happy till the end of his days, because there's no stopping the gathering of the lost and the strays. He says I've got time for another one, so this is one that I learned and I uh, watched this, I watched the video a lot of times and I finally learned this poem. It's called Horseback Religion. Now a cowboy makes his living horseback and most Sundays he's on the range. To the preacher and the deacons this may seem a little strange. But he never misses a chance to worship just because he's not in town. God built the range he works on, and he sees him all around. When the snow melts in spring and the grass starts coming on, 
and renews the cowboy's spirit like the night he's waiting dawn. He looks out over his horse's ears and watches the sun come up. God's building a new day around him, and it sure enough fills his cup. He watches a wild-oriented cow as she licks her newborn calf. Now that's God working before his eyes, and it beats a city a mile and a half. There's wildlife all around him, all following nature's course. No man lives closer to God than the one that does it on a horse. Now a cowboy is wild and reckless, may not stop to count the cost, but he knows his maker better and some will think he's lost. A good cowboy won't mistreat a horse or let his company down. He won't lie about what he's done, but he may draw loose when he's in town. He lasts the Lord's forgiveness, the same as all the rest, and rope is more than horse, and try to do his best. A top hat won't ask no favors. He takes the good, right with the bad, and he knows he won't face anything as tough as the Savior had. He works in constant danger and takes chances every day, but the Lord is right there with him as he shows and lights the way. Now I've been pinned down under snaky bronks with no one around to lend a hand. And come out just scratched and bruised, so I knew that God was in command. When I watch wild horses running with an old man to lead, my throat gets tight and my heart beats fast, so I feel my special need. You can't stack money high enough for what God's bought for me, but he made me a buckaroo and sent his son to set me free. So as I ride across God's country, with his handiwork all in view, that old family sound makes a plum good cowboy pew. Now as I work cows here on earth, I'm never at a loss. And I'll make that final roundup where Christ is wagon boss. Let's hear another one for that young man. That young man. Our next star performers we're going to have coming up here is going to be Kristen Harris and with along with Cold Angel. No, I'm going to watch her today. You're going to watch her today. All right, our next star we're going to have here is going to be Kristen Harris. Cowboy Gospel songs. Down a dusty trail I wander And for a place out yonder Where no one can ever stray They say And no one ever fails Though I'm going one way only Dangerous 
here cannot alarm me. Nothing on the trail can harm me. For the blessed Lord is near to guide. We ride the dusty trails. Dusty trails are happy trails as I ride the hills. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Kristen Harris and Coyote Joe Sart.
place where I worship is the wide open spaces built by the hand of the Lord, where the trees of the forest are like pops of an organ, and the breeze plays an organ chord. All the stars are.
That's why I lay my burdens down When the flood of doubt comes rolling in That's my place for higher ground God help me to remember The precious blood He shed for me Grant, I may never forget the precious love he's meant for me. In the shadow of the cross, all the healing powers there, freedom from the pain that life may bring. There's only comfort and some care for a bright and mighty promise it was there he paid the price with the best that the master had to give in the shadow of the cross in the shadow of the cross That's where I lay my burdens down When the flood of doubt comes rolling in That's my place for higher ground God help me to remember Precious love he spent for me. God grant that I may never forget the precious blood he shed for me. In the shadow of the cross, it was all done for me. got to make this mention. I've met four new friends this weekend and you know what? It's a good feeling because I see my old friends out here sitting. Yeah. Uh, the M&M's over here. That's Mike and Melissa. They come rolling into town wondering what's going on. We pointed them to this park out back here. And they've been here ever, ever since. Thank you. I hope you make us trial back for next year. Chris back there, our new sound man, he's done a fantastic job this Thank weekend. You. I really don't sound like this. <laughs> I kind of got this voice. Oh, Oops, yeah. sorry, I shut off the effects. I know, sorry, thank you. Hang on. Don't do it again. I'll give you another 20. Hey, yep. Um, all I'm going to ask you folks is when you get ready to do this next year, you bring friends and bring their little kids because that's where our future generation is going to be, you know, like Veronica back there and of course uh, Pistol, she ain't here yet, probably sleeping in, but uh, Thatch, he's already on the road. we got a gal over here, I call her everything but Linda. <laughs> She even combed her hair this morning. She says, no, I didn't. <laughs> I won't give you no more bad time after the day about your hair. Yeah, you can see it on Facebook, you know. <laughs> Kristen, there she's, I, I still probably ain't doing it right, right? Kristen? Yeah, you got it. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> but uh, I kind of watched her in the, backgrounds, you know, for the last couple of years, and I'm impressed. And uh, we have a lot of young entertainers out there across our country that I meet up in Canada, down in Mexico, over in Hawaii. God, you wouldn't believe how many is over there. They're just aching to be known. 
And then you got old guys like me. And Mark, would you join me now, please? It don't get much better than this, you know. I mean, hell, I'm on the downstroke of my my road. And uh, he said, I'm glad you're ahead of me. Clear some of them rocks out of the way. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't really, we weren't planning on being here, but last night uh, we had an opportunity to to visit with Mary Lou and uh, as we visited we had some things in common and we were impressed by our sweet spirit and I'm going to choke up night ain't even started yet <laughs> thanks Joe you're welcome <laughs> anyway uh, being on Sunday and, and this is a church service uh I'm recovering that date. Fairly recovered. It's been, oh, I don't know, 17, 18 years. But as we talked, um, you know, the counseling and, and all that other stuff, it's important. But when it comes right down to it, it's the atonement of our Savior. And until you can accept the love of your Savior and admit that it's not you, it's Him, you're not really recovered. And I mentioned that um, now my wife and I, we are uh, in charge of the 12-step addiction recovery program with our church. And the love that we see in those meetings when people are trying to find their way. It touches me every day. And I'm going to try to sing this song. I don't know if I'm going to make it. You want to lower it down a key? We better, let's lower it down a key. I was going to do it in C because I can really hit them high notes. I said I'd stand on a chair if I needed to. <laughs> But I'm not quite stable enough this morning for that. This is my very favorite hymn. Um, everybody knows it, um, how great thou art. And maybe I can do it. <laughs> oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds I hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. Then 
sings, My soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Thank you. We practiced part of one verse back there while I was eating a donut. Now, um, if you'll indulge me, I, I, my wife asked me to do this. It's, the other part that got me on the right track, um, I wrote this poem quite a few years ago, and I never was going to do it in public because it's a little too personal. Uh, but it's a true story. It's something that happened to my dad when he was a young man on the ranch. And one day he took me aside and, and he told me this story. And the way he put it, um, really touched me. It took a while, but, but it did. So, because my wife asked me to do it, I pretty much do whatever she asks because she keeps me. Um, I call this crowd offenses. Just something to think about when you start thinking that the things you do don't affect anybody but you. Tell me what you mean, old man. You're not making any sense. I think your mind is slipping. I'm not crowding any fans. Well, yeah, I've had a drink or two, so what? I'm old enough to do whatever I want. I don't have to take your guff. But please, explain it anyway. I'd sure like to know what crowding fences means, but hey, be quick. I gotta go. Well, I waited for a lecture. But what I got instead was a lesson from my father. And this is what he said. Son, we used to have a mare some 30 years ago, and any time she got the urge, she'd jump the fence and go. But out along the pasture was one built strong and high. The pole fence of the horse corral was one she wouldn't try. Oh, she'd make a run at it, and to those that didn't know, it looked like she was going to jump. But it was just a show, because that mare knew her limits. That fence was just too tall. She'd set up hard and turn away just inches from a fall. Well, one spring she fold a stud colt. And within a month or two, any fence that mare jump. 
Well, the colt, he'd jump it too. But the first day we corralled him, and that mare did her routine, the colt ran right beside her thinking this was the real thing. When the mare set up, he gathered up. She stopped and turned. He jumped. He didn't clear the top rail, and he landed with a thump. He died from a broken neck. But that mare was to blame because that colt trusted his mama. He just didn't know the game. Now, son, you're like that wise old mare. You've been around enough to know which rules you can break and which ones are just too tough. You know some things can kill you, but you crowd that fence in fun. You charge at it, then set up whirl to the side and run. But you've got little brothers. And to them, you can do no wrong. And when they see you jump a fence, well, they want to tag along. But those boys are like that colt. They lack experience. And they might think you're going to jump when, well, you're just crowding a fence. So take a look around you next time you crowd that fence and ask if what you're doing really makes a lick of sense. Well, my dad was right. I knew it. But I didn't change that day. It took a while to sink in. But I finally changed my ways. And now, well now my dad's my hero. All my brothers are strong and tall. And that story about a mare and cold just might have saved them from a fall. Thanks, folks. Got me choked up. <laughs> Mark Seeley from the Fall River Boys. Let's hear it for Mark. Together. Let's hear it for them too. Right. We're still having a good time. Let's hear it. Love, it. Love this crowd. We have a gentleman here. His name is Brian Dilworth. He's one of our big advertisers over here. He has a lot to do with this event as the rest of the folks as well, Claudia and Payson. The Brian's going to come up here and give a round for us. Let's hear it for Mr. Brian Dilworth. Thank you for all that you do, Brian. Boy, how do I follow an introduction like that? <laughs> Call me a gentleman. <laughs> uh, I kind of hate to detract from this service so far, boy. I was touched. Thank you, Mark. But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Bill Jones wrote this poem called Answered Prayer. Jake the rancher went one day to fix a distant fence. The wind was cold and blustery and the clouds rolled gray and dense. When he pounded that last staple and gathered tools to go, the temperature had fallen, and the snow began to blow. When he finally reached his pickup truck, he felt a heaviness of heart. From the sound that that ignition made, he knew it wouldn't start. So Jake did what most of us would do had we been there. He humbly bowed his balding head and sent locked prayer. Well, when he turned the key that final time, he softly cursed his luck. They found him three days later, frozen in the cab of that old truck. Now, Jake had been around a bit and done his share of roaming, but when he saw heaven, he was shocked. Hell, it looked just like Wyoming. 
Now, there were a few changes, of course, but just some minor things. One place had simply disappeared, the place they call Rock Springs. <laughs> the, the BLM was gone, of course. There weren't no grazing fees. And the wind in Rollins and Cheyenne was just a gentle breeze. The park and forest so service folks, they didn't fare so well. They'd been sent to fight a fire in the wilderness in hell. <laughs> Though heaven was a real nice place, Jake felt no peace of mind. He saddled up and lit a shack, not knowing what he'd find. But one day up in Cody, one August afternoon, he saw St. Peter at the bar of the old Proud Cut Saloon. Now of all the saints in heaven, Jake's favorite one was Peter. Now this line isn't really necessary, but it makes good rhyme and meter. Well, they shared a frosty mug or two, and maybe it was three. No one was really keeping track, you see, and heaven beer is free. Well, Jake said to Pete, I've often heard that God would answer prayer. But you know, the one time that I asked for help, why well, he simply wasn't there. Does God answer the prayers of some, but not the prayers of others? Now that doesn't seem exactly square, because I know all men are brothers. Or does he answer randomly, without no rhyme or reason? Maybe it's the time of day, the weather, or the season. I ain't trying to act smart, that's just the way I feel, but could you tell me, Pete, just what the heck's the deal? Well, say, Peter listened quietly until old Jake was done, and with a smile of recognition, he says, Ah, you're the one. That day your truck, it wouldn't start, and you sent your prayer adrift. You caught us at a real bad time. It was right at the end of the day shift, and a thousand angels went to check the status of your file, but Jake, you know, we haven't heard from you in quite a while, and though all prayers are answered, God really has no quota. He didn't recognize your voice, and he started some guy's truck in North Dakota. <laughs> Bill Jones. I'll turn it over to Tony. Nice job, Brian. Let's hear it for Brian Dilworth, the sponsor. Everybody still happy? I would like to close our cowboy church with a few bits of humor. Old Ned been down at the saloon. Been down there until it closed and he hit it pretty hard. He had a good horse. All he had to do was hop on and the horse went back to the ranch. It's just starting to get light in the morning on his way back, and he's doing all that he can to stay on that saddle. And he's hearing some noise down by the river. Ah, go check this out. Gets a little closer, noise getting a little louder. There's a bunch of people down there making a lot of noise and commotion. He gets a little closer. He doesn't know what's going on, but he gets right about to that water's edge, and holy cow, pops right in that body of water with all them people all around him. Just so happens it happens to be a baptism. <laughs> that preacher boy grabbed old Ned, shoved his head under the water, and he comes up. The preacher boy says, You found Jesus? He's down there about a minute this time. Picks her back up. You found Jesus! Oh! Spitting up water, choking. Oh! Spits him down there about two minutes. And this is all he can do to hold him up. I mean, Ned comes up. Oh, God! Oh. If you found Jesus! He finally comes to and he says, Are you sure this was where he fell in? Thank you.
That's always a tough one for me. This last one I'd like to give you is a cowboy. He cowboyed for a long time, and he realized that being a cowboy was kind of tough on the body, and well, it was kind of hard paying the bills, so he decided to learn himself photography. He's up in Glacier National Park. Beautiful up there. Nice, nice afternoon. Across the river where he's taking these pictures, he notices a sow, a grizzly. And he feels something brush alongside him. He looks and there's a cub. Oh, there's another cub over there. And about that time, he notices them two cubs. That she-bear gets up on her hind quarters. She's sniffing around and she spots him and she makes a beeline for him and heads right across that river. He grabs up his photography and he's doing all he can to run down that trail. Pretty soon he sees she's kept on catching up to him pretty fast. They think they can run about 30 miles an hour. He drops all that and he's booking it just as high as fast as he can. He's saying, oh God, not this, not now. And he's looking over his shoulder, she's right about there and boom, right across the log in that trail and down he goes. He goes to get back up and she's right on him and she's like, Rawr! she's just about ready to take his hand head off. And pretty soon it stops. All the wind in the trees stop. The river stops. The clouds open up. Down comes this beam of light. Right on top of him. And this voice comes out and says, All these years you've denied my very existence. You've used my name in vain. And now you want me to save you. What do you have to say for yourself? He says, I know, Lord, I know. I know the dog gone it. He, said, he says, I don't know what to do. He goes, you tell me what you want me to do. He says, well, can you at least make the bear a Christian? He said, boy, that's an odd call. He says, that's what you want. He goes, yeah, that'll be fine, Lord. He goes, all right, so be it. Up comes this beam of light, clouds close back up. They start moving on. The river, the trees start wind whispering through the wind. River starts flowing. And pretty soon that paw that was about to take his head off comes down like this, overcomes the other one, and that bear bows her head. And says, Dear Lord, thank you for the food we are about to receive. <laughs> Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank Chris from SNS Sound over there. Chris Dixon, let's hear a nice work for him. You're a good man, Chris. Thank you. You make us all shine up here, and we all appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for being here and up here. I want to thank Lost and Lava, the committee, all the sponsors, everybody that opened their homes for us, everyone. Thank you. We are all humbled. Thank you very much. Thank you.